Can we mute my audio so we can do the intro?
All right. Hello, everybody. I think we are we're getting to it. Showing you guys the back end of Streamlabs for too long over there on the stream. Hello. Uh, Hi. You guys hear me? Everybody's good? Yes. Yes. Hi. Sweet. Good. All right. So welcome to a lunch zone, another lunch zone, where we will today talk about Genshin Impact for the first time. I have been planning on doing this stream for a long fucking time, and I just have not known how to talk about Genshin Impact up until this point. There is so much fucking shit going on in this game. Oh my god. Uh, enough that if we really wanted to, we could dedicate an entire show just to Genshin Impact. Um, but you we're just going to do an hour. You for that, for your picks and stuff, you know? Oh my god. Yeah, well, yeah, we'd have to... Well, we'd have to do the gambling off screen, obviously. Um, I'm joined today with two lovely co-hosts. I'm David Kutchik. I'm a PhD student here at UW Milwaukee. English, second year. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I am a anthropology master student at UWM, and my name is Morgan. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I am Ren. I'm a master student here at UW UWM in English. Uh, if anybody can't hear anybody, tell me now so I can get that fixed. Uh, for some reason, the Genshin application doesn't want to pay, play well with my streaming configuration. So uh, we're just doing a monitor capture right now, which I realize isn't the sexiest thing in the world, but we're going to make it work. Um, yeah, it might be my internet, but it is. Oh, wait, never mind. It was just the game. Yeah, the game takes a moment to load up sometimes. This game is supposed to run on mobile, so like I can I can make this thing look like fucking potato soup and it'll work. Um, if, if necessary, it's loading right now, it could, it could run on a potato clock. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, yeah, do we want to read the land acknowledgement before we get started? Uh, sure. Um, in Milwaukee, oh, we acknowledge that we live and work on traditional Potawatomi, Ho-Chunk, and Menominee homelands along the southwest shores of Michigami, part of North America's largest system of freshwater lakes where the Milwaukee, Menominee, and Kinnikinnick rivers meet, and the peoples of Wisconsin's sovereign Anishinaabe, Ho-Chunk, Menominee, Oneida, and Mohican nations remain present. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you, Morgan. Really appreciate it. So uh, today, what are we doing? We're talking about Genshin, but we're talking about Genshin at a really interesting time in the Genshin community, uh, which is to say everybody fucking hates MiHoYo right now. MiHoYo are the Why? Chinese devs that are doing this shit because of the fucking anniversary rewards. Oh, my God. So we've been playing this game, this fucking live service gotcha game for a fucking year. And these jackasses decide that a year of our time is worth 10 pulls on the gotcha lever. That's it. Well, I see. there's also some other shit. Um, I can go through the whole thing. Like I can open the sluice gate right now if you want. They uh, they're they're offering about five dollars in rewards to a fan artist com uh, co uh, competition that would win, like for the winner. They are currently trying to uh, get people to write up their own stories about fucking um, Genshin, and they're paying a thousand dollar cash prize and turning that story into a movie, which. You know what? Let me just say that's that seems like exploitation of fan labor to me. You know? Yeah, I would I would say so. Yeah. So we're playing this game at a time when the game itself is in a good place as far as health goes, except the community is currently review bombing it. Uh, people are protesting buying things in it. That's the whole like the whole thing is happening right now. Um, and so you know naturally, uh, while I'm going to show this game off a little bit. We are not going to hit this menu on the top here because that menu goes to the gotcha system. And I will not, I'm just, I'm not, we're, we can talk about the gotcha system, but I'm not going to demonstrate gambling on stream, all right? Because that's what it is. It's gambling. Oh, yeah. So maybe I should go over the, have you guys had any uh, contact with uh, Genshin Impact? Uh, I have had a decent amount. There's a lot of people in my free company who are into Genshin or have picked it up and put it down and picked it up and put it down. Um, I know a few people, because it's Final Fantasy community, so they're all weebs, they do so many gotcha games mm -hmm. <laughs> we have their own little separate phoning it in chat where they can go talk about their gotcha games off of general because there's so many people in like 10 different gotcha games. Gotcha. I do not personally play Genshin though. I have seen Genshin played a little bit and I have heard some of the controversies but that's all I got. <laughs> okay, David. 
Um, I've played, I've like experimented with a couple on mobile. Um, I've never played Genshin, um, but I have played other like gotcha style games, but never like beyond just like an hour. Okay. So the thing about Genshin that makes it hyper unique is that it is a huge open world adventure game with RPG mechanics slapped with a gotcha system. So here's the world. I should say here's part of the world. Here's the other part of the world. And here's the other part of the world. And they are still adding something like four more continents to this arrangement. Aren't all the con aren't all the places based off of like real life countries? Yes. So we are currently in Mondstadt. Mondstadt is kind of a Germanic influenced location. Uh, it's, it's in some ways the America of the Genshin world. Uh, it is viewed is a freedom loving place. Um, in the in the most vaguest sense, uh, Li Wei here is the Chinese uh, stand-in. Uh, Inazuma is the Japan stand-in. Uh, all of these are, are interesting. Uh, the game, for some reason, has a pension about talking about uh, certain. Uh, how should I say? Difficult subjects that it doesn't handle super well. Um, there are multiple genocides in the history of, of Genshin Impact's world, and none of them are described in any meaningful way that we could reasonably talk about them in, in some detail. Uh, Hardcell is correct to point out that there is a fucking lot of empty ocean as it stands um, in this in this game. Um, they are adding more stuff as, as things go on. World, the world is I sufficiently large, I can tell you that much. It's just not, you know, maybe a hundred hours you could go through the whole thing reasonably. The last link there is a lot of empty of wilderness, heart. though, so, you know, it's got that kind of Breath of the Wild vibe where you're, you're kind of wandering for a long period of time. Um, other basic stuff I should cover before we get into, like, doing missions and stuff. So here's my character selection list. I can only have four characters on my roster at a given point in time. Characters, they give you one character of every element for free, and then you have to pull for all the other ones. So the free characters are Amber, Barbara, who's your healer, if you want her to be. Um, there be is Lisa, uh, who's your electro user. Uh, you've got a cryo user, ice character, Kaya. Uh, you've got Geo, uh, who's, Noelle's not free, but she's functionally free. Like, you're guaranteed to get her if you pull for her. Uh, you get the Traveler, who uh, is your main character, who can switch between three different elements. I have him on Electro right now, but I got him on Animo, which is the Wind Element, or Geo, which is the Rock Element. Uh, they also did a crossover with um, Horizon Zero Dawn, and, uh, well, now Alloy is in this game. She's cool. Why not? Yeah. Why, why not have Alloy in your game? I mean, no, I have no problem with it. It's She's there. It's a little weird, but not like the weirdest thing in the world. doesn't throw me out of the experience. Um, and then the rest of these characters, like I said, are all characters I pulled for on the gacha system. So the character archive here will show you all the characters in the game. As you can see, there's a fair few of them. And more are being added all the time. The five-star characters are categorically better than the four-star characters in most instances. There are, of course, some exceptions to this. Bennett, for instance, is a fucking... Bamf. The man can buff you so hard. He is so good. Um, and, and a character like um, like Yoimiya is not particularly good compared to somebody in, in her role compared to somebody like Bennett or, or something like that. So so not all of these characters who are yellow are just patently the, or orange are patently the best characters in the game, but they ha they are often better, like substantially better than the, the purple characters. Purple characters you're much more likely to pull for. Hartzell uh, raises a good point and a good question. Uh, do all the women wear tights and nothing else? Uh, well, kind of. It's a big kind <laughs> of. Uh, sometimes they have boots. Sometimes they have <laughs> boots. Uh, sometimes they don't have tights. Uh, there are a lot of tights, though, like a substantial amount of tights. Sometimes they have very short shorts. Yes. Um, as oh, you can see, you. it is a, a Japanese game. <laughs> it is a... Chinese game. Oh, Chinese game. Sorry, it's a Chinese game. My bad. I, I misspoke. My bad. <laughs> but yes, there's a lot of yeah. tights. There's a lot of fan service. It is baked in. Uh, I am sorry. <laughs> Some of these characters are gender. I'm not really sure. Like, like, and part of that is is going into what David kind of studies uh, right now. You know, this like uh, that American queerness is going to view uh, characters from China or characters from uh, Japan differently than uh, Chinese or, or Japanese audiences are, are. And so Zhao to us, I think, looks very androgynous, but I don't know if that would be the same in China, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's I think there's a, pro a large population of queer players in here in this uh, uh, in this game because of that particular thing. 
Um, I know that was something that drew me to the game, and uh, but like, also I just like the mechanics. It's got a really cool combat system, but it's also be being addled constantly by the fact that it's a fucking gambling racket. So that's where we're at with this game. That's like my quick recap. There's a lot of other systems going on, but that's the gist. I think one of the things that it's like, um, like with Mi Miyoho, like a lot of the other gotchas I've seen, um, what one that was really big a few weeks ago was like Guardian Tail and Ark Knights. Oh, Ark they Knights, yeah. Are, they're kind of like designed for a mobile genre, so like a tower defense system, or I think Guardian Tales is kind of like a Final Fantasy-esque, sort of like pixel I isometric <laughs> top-down sort of thing. It's not tower defense, I know that, but it's also not fully rendered 3D Breath of the Wild thing. Mm -hmm. and, I think that, and I think that's where um, Miyoho has kind of found their like niche in that they're like hey look at this really pretty game you can run around and play with and also it's a gotcha game like it's a good game next to gotcha whereas i think a lot of gotcha games kind of gotcha mechanics are kind of like baked in a little bit more you know yeah i well i don't even know if it's baked in a little bit more they're baked in pretty fucking hard the uh the issue here is mainly i should say that uh not that they're they're baked in more or less, but that the game itself is like you say, it's a good game. Like it's it's mechanically really solid, and it's not just like a, a like an auto scroller or an auto battler, you know. So there's there's action that you get to participate in, which I'm going to show you a little bit of now. Um, I'm mainly going to use Bennett and uh, Kazuha for this. Kazuha is my main character that I would go to. Uh, so the basic combat flow is this: you have a four hit basic attack. Let me switch Kazuha. Four or five hit basic attack. Basic attacks are going to look different and act differently based on the character, and will also have you know different knockback. You have a charge attack, which you can use to do damage and knockback. Then you have two skills. You have a, a, a skill that's pretty much constantly on a rotating cooldown, and you have an ultimate skill. So Kazuha's E is his uh, basic skill. I can charge it or I can uh, tap it. If I charge it, these guys get pulled in, and then I can do a plunging attack and follow up with some basics, and then they're dead. Now, the nice thing is that I can switch between different characters and elements will interact in different ways. So if I, for instance, let's say make this patch of grass on fire with Bennett and then I use Kazuha's E, you will notice that Kazuha releases a uh, orange swirl. And that means that then when I hit with, uh, with his E, uh, it'll do both animo damage, which is air damage and also fire damage. There's a bunch of stuff like that in the game. So you've got this like compelling RPG uh, mechanic, which you know is still like a like a kind of a, a beat em up, but it's got some mechanical complexity on top of it. Uh, but you also have it constantly added by the fact that anytime you want a neat character, you have to pull in the slot machine for it. There's, there's also a different. There's also systems of like um, getting shards and stuff, right? Like in game currency yes you can you can make a substantial amount of the uh the pulls if you will uh which are called i think uh fates uh simply by existing in the world like i won't go to it right now because like i said i'm not i will not go to the, the gambling menu on stream um but i have about 30 pulls saved up right now just from and i don't okay. i don't really pay that much for this game um, I paid like five dollars a month for their little like battle pass thing for one of their little two battle pass things before um, but other than that, I really haven't spent that much money on the game. Um, here, I'll show you. Let's uh, here. Here's another elemental reaction we can do. Uh, so I have to use Animo to blow away the dust to do the quest. When I do that, these guys come in, right? And now, uh, whenever uh, Pyro mixes with Ice or Cryo here, you get a melt reaction, which does extra damage. And you'll notice also that this character uses a bow instead of using a, um, a sword like the other ones. So, you know, there are different, there are five different weapon classes in the game. Time to go. And then, you know, you can swap between them as you need to. So there's like, a, again, a decent amount of mechanical complexity, not the most like insane thing in the world, but it's flashy and it feels good. And sometimes that's what you need in an RPG. <laughs> Hard Cell asks, are there various body types? Body said, types. I saw, I saw a little girl, but it doesn't think it counts. Like height, weight, muscular builds. 
Yes, so they do actually change some basic mechanics. Uh, for instance, how fast you sprint uh, will change based on body type. What what spaces you can fit through will change based on body type. Uh, there are... But, like, I think he was more Ooh. meaning, like, is there, like, buff man? Oh. Or is there, like, tiny... There's, like, tiny cat girl, but is there, like, mm -hmm. anything past... There are children, wifey. there are uh, people who are basically adults, and there are those okay. kind of in the middle. And so you have a character like Kasu in terms of like male builds. And same for female okay. builds. You have large, like, kind of what you would, I, I guess, sexualized but large just... women, middle sized women, and small women. Okay, so there's mostly height. Yeah, it's and mostly then that height is correlated to like an age sort of bracket. Yes, there is a lolly cat girl. She's a good healer. I don't use her right now, but I need to level her up. You get like benefits out of leveling all your characters, even if you don't use them. So there's I some guess benefits. I, it's a... Okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go for. Not gonna talk about that. Uh... What, are you, what are you not gonna talk about? Oh, you said there it. There is a oh. game. There is a gotcha game where you collect <laughs> pretty much literal children. Oh sure, yeah, like, I'm sure. They're all. They're all under. Oh, they're... Like they look like they're all under twelve. Um, and there's a lot of, like, thought, like, girl-father aesthetics, I guess? I don't know. It's it's a very strange game. I would not- I I don't, I don't even know what it's called. It's called. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> but I guess there's, there's an idea of, like, lolly cat girl and stuff. I don't know. I don't know what I was going for. It just reminded me that it exists. And then I was uncomfortable again because it exists. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. like, yeah. So you get prima gens and stuff and shards to upgrade your weapons and things. Can you convenience buy those? Yes, like if you, you wanted, can you convenience can buy, buy them? them. You could buy okay. them for a for a set price. Oh, okay, here's the uh, here's the so these are the um, fucking these rewards are for me returning to the game after a long period of time. That's all that this is. Oh, I gotta, you uh, gotta they, love those login rewards. Yeah, Keep these are so they give game. you like seven login rewards if you don't come back to the game for, for like 14 days or something, which is nice. I don't have a problem with that per se. Uh, the game is obviously like a live service. These are the fucking anniversary rewards. This is all you fucking get. Your year worth of time in this goddamn game is worth a, a single 10 pull. Not, by the way, the way the pulls work in this game, you are guaranteed a four star for every 10 pulls you make, and you're guaranteed a five star for every 90 pulls you make. So there is a guarantee that you will get something, which is better than most gotcha games. And I think that's what makes Genshin playable. But the fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. They decided that for a year of their of their fan base's time, for a game that has made billions of dollars, they could only spare for each fucking individual player like five dollars in fucking rewards. Rewards that cost them nothing, by the way. Well, what, what, what the fan base like wants and wanted was uh, a fucking um, a free five star off of like the standard banner. So there, there are two different types of banners in Genshin. There's the character banner that goes around doing limited time characters. And then there's the standard banner. And the standard banner has characters that are on it you can pull for any time. There are six five stars that always appear on the standard banner. You can get them anytime during the game. You're you basically, if you pull enough, you will eventually get them. That's kind of how that works. Um, the fact of the matter is, of course, that, you know, most people are not whales. They can't spend that much money and will not spend that much money to just, you know, throw their entire fucking soul away into trying to get every single fucking character in the game. That being said, um, the, the trouble here is that they could just give away one of, like, what people thought would happen on this first anniversary is that they would give away a free standard banner five star. Something that, you know, again, you could get any time, but it's nice to be able to choose which one you would get. And that way you have one character in the game that you're like, yes, okay, this is a character I wanted to have out of these six. For me, that's Diluc. I really wanted to get myself a Diluc. Um, here he is in all of his uh, splendor. He is an angry man uh, and he, is, he has a hawk. He's very cool. Uh, he's like kind of the Genshin world's Batman. That being said, there's there's more to, like I said, this game we could we could do a whole fucking series talking about the weird socio-political nonsense in this game. Um, but there's a there's a Batman who is a wine tycoon. Um, anyway, so I wanted to get this character. Obviously that's not going to happen because the anniversary rewards are not there. 
Um, and people are just upset about both the fan exploitation and also the fact that they've put a year into this game and, and now the game says, oh, well, that's worth like maybe 10 bucks of our money, you know? I mean, that's have... I, I mean, also, I don't want us to call you guys, I don't want to... The fan labor issue is a big issue, in my opinion, the exploitation of that. But to me, the anniversary event... Like, Miyoho's like, not known not... for her... I'm Time to go. echoing. David, am I echoing yeah. for you? Uh, not for me. You're echoing for me, so it probably is going from David. Whoops, I can I can mute myself, sorry. That's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah, but like, I don't think, because it's a free-to-play game, and Moyoho knows that, so they're like, well, we're just, we're throwing you a bone. And I understand, like, oh, well, it should be, like, a year of my time. You know what the anniversary events in Final Fantasy are? Well, okay, before you go into this, I just want to point out that Mihoyo's other game, Honkai Impact, they did exactly what I described we thought that Genshin was going to do. They gave people a okay. free standard banner five stars. So the company has okay. a history of the producing has this particular okay. si kind of reward and has deviated from that on this game that has made billions of more dollars than their yeah. previous game. So, Which is like, probably this why they did it. This isn't, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> they think they can keep their fan base without having to give as much in return. Um, and also, as I understand it, uh, the culture around gacha games in China is incredibly different than it is in the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot more tolerance for yeah. horseshit, uh, and the companies get away with a fuck off. Uh, though, I, I, like I said, I don't know too much about it, so I'm going to leave my commentary on that. At the yeah. door. <laughs> well, like, I can understand being upset if that's what they do with Honkai, because I know Hon Honkai and Genshin are quite closely developed together. Yes. Um... But for, like, Final Fantasy Anniversary events, you get, like, this year, you got a parasol, which is just a glam item, some fi some new fireworks, and a cutscene that was, like, a heartfelt thank you from Yoshi. That's all the anniversary events. That's all the events are in Final Fantasy. So when someone goes, I put I put a year of my life into this, and they're only giving us $5 worth of stuff, I'm like, I put in... $144 worth of my money into Final Fantasy, and all I got was a crappy cutscene. <laughs> so, like, there's, there's, there's always those differences, and it's the developer's norm. So I understand why people are somewhat angry about it. But at the same time, I'm like, it's a, it's technically a free game, and I understand people putting time and effort into it can make you upset. Well, and the um, other thing, of course, is that while Final Fantasy has a subscription-based model, you don't have to deal with a gambling mechanic, right? Your yeah, main mode of playing the game is not a gamble. It's not gambling. Whereas That's in this true. case, this is the case. You, know, like you could you could play this entire this game and and uh, you know you could throw. Let's say you were playing for free, and you just did the basic sort of shit every day. Um, you could throw a hundred days into this game uh, before you get uh, a five star character, and when you do, you have no guarantee that it's actually going to be one that you actually want to play. <laughs> And so there, I think there but is some some desire on the part of the fan base to be able to mm -hmm. plug and play, you know, to pick up and play the game the way that they want to play, um, which, you know, isn't something that the current monetization model allows for, free or yeah. not. But I think, the, I think that's an issue of the fact that it's a gotcha game. You Implicitly, like, a player's, when they look at Genshin Impact and they know enough about Genshin Impact to want to get into it, they're kind of signing that mental contract in a way saying i'm okay knowing that i'm not going to get characters that i necessarily want or knowing that i'm not going to quite be able to play the game that i want if i don't want to put money into it it's kind of that inherent like when i go to a free-to-play game or a game that's offered for free and it has like a very limited trial period i go into it knowing i'm not going to be able to play the game that i want to play unless i put money into it like eli just downloaded destiny 2 and they give a very small piece of the game for free away so you can try it. And he's playing with his brother and his brother's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure we've already gone through like 50% of the game that's available for free. So either he stops playing Destiny 2 or he spends the $80 to buy the rest of the game. Right. So it's kind of, but you know, for again, me, it's there's a, like a, you know what you're getting, right? Like there's a difference between knowing what you're getting and being certain that your money is going somewhere that it will get you somewhere and not knowing yeah. what you're getting. And, you know, this, I, like maybe it's worth also pointing out 
that the value of a 90 pull in Genshin, like, all right, I told, said I wasn't gonna go to the monetization menu, but I kind of have to to prove this point. So here's the here's the, the wish menu, right? We're going right past mm -hmm. that, we're going to the shop. The value of buying, like the crystal top up that you need to actually get 100 pulls would be something in the realm of, so this is 6,480, hold on, let me see how much it would cost to actually get, to guarantee a character for yourself, I have to, Check this. But at the same time, like I, that's not the point. I understand that you have to spend a certain amount of money to get the character you want. The point is, when you go to Genshin, you know you might have to put a lot of money for to put a character to get a character. That's inherently what you're agreeing to when you play a gotcha. You would pretty much have and to I spend two hundred dollars to guarantee, like flat to, from zero yeah. to guarantee, and that's a character pull. And I think that's ridiculous. But this is why I don't play gotchas, because <laughs> I know I can't do the game that I want to do without putting money in. And so it's like, it's a great game, but I probably will never pick it up because of the gotcha mechanics, and that's why I don't play gotchas. So when people, when you start a free-to-play gotcha game, there is that understanding that I will put money into it. Now I will say that games that you pay for, um, well, like, I would also just argue like, that there's ways there are ways of monetizing free to play games that are not predatory, and that we oh, should oh, hold yes. games, even 100%. gotcha games, to standards that are, are that way. Because I mean, at the end of the day, this is a digital world. This is a space one chooses to occupy, and by occupying that space, you know, especially if that space is laid out as a free is a free area. One would hope that the that the the uh, environment is is designed with the kind of stewardship in mind of the players mm -hmm. who are going to be engaging with it. Um, but so the, while I on one hand I understand that your 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 argument is well it's free to play so you know you you enter into this space where you know oh well this is what they're gonna do this is how their monetization works whatever um, uh, that's been more clear and apparent in the last you know six months but when people also when people pick this up day one they knew it was a gotcha game and they didn't really know terribly much else about how it was gonna function. You know, we could assume it was like Honkai, but they kind of obviously burned that bridge several times. So it, there's this matter of like holding the company responsible for the actions that they're doing, regardless of, you know, whether or not this is something that, that people enter into as far as like agreeing to be in a space with this sort of thing. Um, and also, I mean, some people genuinely come into these games with the delusion that they can play them for free. Not everybody's educated about how this stuff works or what a gotcha game is. And so like on some level, there is that issue of people come in, they play the game, you know, they they get invested in it and then they go, oh, well, shit, if I want to get what I want, you know, I have to pay money for it. And that's not something that and then they, you know, if they had to struggle with a gambling addiction or something like that, they end up in a really bad spot. Yeah, I w and I I agree that there's certain effects of these games and I don't agree that for example like try and put um, I just think that Into the wind. in a an adult who picks up a game I will not get into children an adult who picks up a <laughs> game and understands that it is a free to play game and they have the not they, ha they are a functioning adult who can make educational, uh, uh, rational decisions, we'll say. Or somewhat rational decisions. We're all humans. We're not rational. But they, when they come to a game like like Genshin or Arknights or any other free-to-play convenience spending games, they get to a point where they realize what the monetization is. There's no way to not see that monetization in Genshin, especially Genshin, uh, like free-to-play MMOs, um, all that kind of stuff. It's impossible not to see where they want your money, in my opinion. Sure. But like, if for someone who started playing at the beginning, I can understand them, you know, it's seeping in, like being like, oh, well, oh, well, they're adding this character. Okay, well, I kind of want that character. I'll, I'll try to pull for it. And then, you know, a year later, they're like, oh, well, there's, well, I'm really not getting my money's worth because like, look at what the anniversary <laughs> is per se. So I can understand like people who started it with it, getting kind of sucked into the monetization slowly but surely, like how I know like Call of Duty, one of the Call of Duties didn't start with monetization and then That's added monetization. So it gets kind of messy that way, um, that you can kind of get sucked into it. But for someone who, I don't know, I just feel like, uh, 
and people with gambling addictions who are recovering from gambling addictions should be able to discern when they need to leave the recovery. Now, if they're stuck in gambling addiction, I'm not sure I that's the like case. I mean, I really, it's like, that's one of those instances where maybe they're able to discern it, but also, you know, your awareness of the fact yes. that you have an addiction and you're, you're stuck in a, a position where that's, like, being exploited isn't necessarily translated into the action of leaving. That's, you know? And that's fair. I know I know several people who get sucked into gacha games and then have to physically uninstall the game because they got sucked into Genshin for a little bit or they're stuck into Guardian's Tales. I had a friend who was known, is known, for spending a lot on gachas and then people got him into more gacha games and I was very angry with them because he's like, oh yeah, I spent $1,000 on Guardian's Tales. And I'm like, how? Why? And he's like, well, I can afford it. And I'm like, that's fine if you can afford it. Follow the well, you also realize it's a problem, right? And he's like, yeah. So I've stopped playing Guardian's Tales. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I do... I don't know. For me, there's... I'm stuck in this weird limbo of games should have a monocle of responsibility for what they offer. But they also are well within their rights to set up a monetization scheme that that works and then the player has the agents enough agency to make a decision for themselves whether to continue playing that game and i think with like genshin and free games it's a well un somewhat well understood fact that free games have bad monetization schemes typically i watched lord of the rings online become a free to play and that go way down the drain with its monetization and its convenient spending. That just to me seems like, like no offense by any means, but that to me, like saying, oh, well, a free game is gonna have a bad monetization scheme. This is how this works. And, you know. It's a norm. It's not how it, it is works. It's a norm, but what I'm trying to say, and I'm not gonna debate that, it certainly is an issue. I just think that like settling for that isn't productive to like, the space that we, you know, the space we occupy in kind of our digital environment, you know, like it, it's it's a norm that Facebook will not, Facebook and other tech companies don't manage their, uh, you know, uh, the information that is. Oh my God, I got a billet. Check that out. That's a rare drop. I can make nice. I can make a free sword with that. Hell yeah, that's super rare. Hell yeah. All right, sorry, I got excited about that. Uh, <laughs> way to de thanks, Genshin. Maybe I should stream. Maybe it's, maybe Genshin likes me when I stream. Jeez. <laughs> they knew. They knew you were getting mad. They knew I was getting mad. Here's a free billet, guys. Uh, anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say is is that like, you know, it's a norm that tech companies, of course, you know, don't uh, cater to or 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 uh, the issues of different disinformation that occur on their mm -hmm. platforms. It's very much the same thing. Are they within their rights to uh, to to you know within the current legal code of the United States to do so? Yes. Is it a problem? Yes. <laughs> you know, and they, they share res as much responsibility uh, for that environment oh. as do the people who are actively producing the disinformation. I, I think. think I think there's a slight difference there um, because Facebook, this Twitter and other social media people, well, then, it's me. Surrender is a valid option. the ways the that they manipulate algorithms and not they don't manipulate the algorithms. The way the algorithms manipulate the web <laughs> and show certain users, you know, this information and that information, the news sources and all that kind of stuff that comes with social media. The it's not it's individualized. So a, a person it's kind of hidden in a way. Where I think it needs to be somewhat regulated because Facebook is like, oh yeah, we show you know these news sources to this person that watches Fox News, but we don't show those you know, same news sources to someone who watches CNN. So because that's not what the algorithm says, and they don't, you know, they didn't realize it's such a big issue because it's such a hidden thing. Whereas Genshin and other games are very obvious, or mostly most times. They're quite obvious with buy polls sort of thing. And with that transaction, because they're required to be required to say you're sending money. Um, so I think there's a slight difference in the ability to regulate it. Like, I, I, I don't know. 
it's it's a very odd place, but I don't think Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and such need to put a lot more understanding into their ways their algorithms are manipulating people because it's not obvious. In my opinion, how they manipulate your recommendeds or how they manipulate what you see on your feed, like what friends they show you on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in Genshin and in other gacha games, their monetization is very obvious. Now the tactics they use, like nudging or you know showing you close holes, like gambling, like getting people to gamble more, that's bad. But the gambling mechanics there are obvious. Well, okay. Again, you get into this yes, but situation where the gambling button may be obvious to every viewer, but the methods by which the game, by that, by that logic, we're separating now the methods by which Genshin gets you to go to the gambling lever from the gambling lever itself. So if that's the case, yeah. then, the, then, then I, I can, I can kind of vibe with this that a free game could have something like a, sl a, 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 a gambling machine in it were the ways that it was guiding you to that more pr pronounced and direct and, and, you know, something that a player could opt in and out of to some degree. Sure, I could see that. Importantly, though, almost all the rewards you get in Genshin are Prima Gems, which can only be spent on the gambling lever. Yeah. So again, you are like, like it, we can make that dissection, but the game text is not so easy, uh, easily, I think, uh, it's not so easy to remove the mechanics and rewards from the lever itself in a way that, that clearly shows what is obvious and what isn't obvious in this case. Yeah. That I will and admit I think, also that Genshin is a more ethical gotcha game than most gotcha games. So there is some sort of like affordance that needs to be made for the fact that they are actually doing better here as far as like allowing people a permanent chance to win stuff than most gotcha games that exist on the market presently. Yeah, and I do think like if we look at something uh, oh, it's got hurts. like like loot boxes in Oh sorry, David, did you want to say something? I saw you on mute. Uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> Is it reverberating for you guys still? Um, I will let like, you know. I might okay. be getting loud and echoing things like. Um, but to to like loot boxes in EA games um, can be kind of particularly. Um, those can just be cut out. In a way, so like for me, I'm like just cut out loot boxes from a paid game. We don't need them. <laughs> mm -hmm. But and from Genshin, I do think that there should be. I'm not saying there shouldn't be regulations. I'm not saying there shouldn't like. I'm, let's not keep people addicted to gambling or get people addicted to gambling. Yes, I'm glad no, we're on the same page. There. But <laughs> but there is, I think there should be a monicum of agency afforded to players in the way that if they can, you know, and developers. I don't I don't think it would be feasible for I don't know, America or the EU to say gotcha games change your games inherently. I feel like that's an overstep in a way. Like yes, their monetization schemes could be better. But they also need to be there for free to play games. It's something that there needs to be a monetization system in There's place for a monetization. Games. I agree with that. Yes. The, the developers deserve they to be could compensated in some way for their job, for their time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Regardless of, of where they should be better. Though. Yes. And, in some and, ways, I do agree with that. And on top of that, like it's it's this. It is a like I. It's about finding a way to generate these things ethically. And if you're gonna run a gotcha mm. game not exploit your fan base in the process because like again the things that these like to go back to the fan rewards like the fans are being asked to create Time art to they're being asked to create you know these these elaborate fan fictions that might turn into you know a feature film you know in the case of the feature film they're being paid a thousand dollars that's great i guess it, it's still it's it's that's, chump change for a feature not. film yeah, chump change for a feature. It's also yeah. like no royalties on that either. So like, it's just like they're just getting their script is just being taken and, and modified by Mihoyo to be whatever the fuck they want. Um, in the case of the fan art, they're getting they're being paid in pulls on the fucking gotcha lever. Mm -hmm. So like again, you know, it, it's 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 just this constant. 
I think the thing with the, the free five star comes up as like a really important reward for me because it is a tactile thing that you can get in the game environment. And then while you have it, you know, you can it functionally changes the way the game plays. It's something that you can enjoy. You can play this game with any character. That's the, that's one thing I will give for this fucking game. There is no character in this game except maybe Amber that you couldn't spend the time to grind up get developed and then play the game with like there's no like you can you can refine your weapon on any character you can refine pick out artifacts that give you extra bonuses on any character those are helpful um if you get multiple pulls of a character you get their constellation but we're not talking about pulls here uh you can level up their talents and that will also help your character out so like literally there are so many ways to make every character in the game viable and i'll give them credit for that you can play anybody yeah. you could play this game and never pull for another character other than the core set, uh, six you get and you would technically be fine until you got to the higher levels of the spiral abyss and then you would need at least eight characters um so and you maybe you get eight characters and i'm miscounting but like I'm just saying, like, 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 what, I think what people wanted, I know it's what I wanted, was a tactile change to the game, which you get by getting these characters with their different skill sets yeah. and vectors, as opposed to and just think, some, some things I can toss into the air and maybe I'll get something back for them. You yeah. Know? And I can understand, it, now that you, you know, now having the context of it's a Honkai, it was part of Honkai Impact, it definitely it shows the relationship that Miyoho thinks it has with this audience or things it can get away with um if it was just like this is the only game they produce and there's nothing else to compare it to i'd be like you guys are kind of acting a little entitled um but if it's a norm within the developer to do that for like honkai and they did it didn't do it here it shows that what their relationship they think is with the audience and i think with free to plays there's definitely a different um relationship players to developers because like with a paid game that's not life service there's so little that is not life service um no, yeah, I mean, everything right now is live service. Everything is a live service. It's like, we're, we're talking about time requirements and how much time somebody puts into a game. And it's like, like, that conversation is totally different when it's uh, in the context of different genres of games, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, so like, if you're... Because, I mean, in, in some ways, I think I feel like you're really well equipped to have that conversation because you're, you are know so much about MMOs, you know? Yeah, and there's always yeah. that difference, like, because... Like, I guess I could talk about, like, with Lord of the Rings and, like, Spator that went free to play as well as Star Trek. You see these monetizations get layered on top of the game, and then sooner or later just ruin all of the balancing mm -hmm. because you can just convenient, put convenient spend your way through. Whereas you look at something like Final Fantasy that has an additional monetization scheme that isn't. They planned it next to it because it was probably Square Enix going, you need a cash shop. <laughs> and so what Final Fantasy XIV crew did is they were like, okay, well, we'll do some mounts, we'll do some, you know, glam items. And yeah, there's a, a, a question of accessibility of, well, I can't afford a cool mount. And so I look lame. But there's also mounts that you get from really hard content that you can have prestige with. Um, so it's kind of like Final Fantasy has this. I think WoW as well almost has a good balancing act where there's a cash shop, but it's not like interfering with the game. It's just like server transfers and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, not that I will give WoW any praise because uh, we'll just put it over there. But <laughs> you know, yeah, right now is not a good time to be giving Blizzard credit for things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is true, like, it's just a fact, they, that's what their cash off is. Um, sure, this thing's gonna absolutely destroy me, by the way. I'm not expecting to have a good team to kill Aisha. Adventure time. I need something you that got, can generate shields, and unfortunately, like, I don't have any characters that are leveled that can generate shields for fighting Aisha. Ha. I believe you, you got this. Um, but, like, with a gacha game, in the and other free-to-play games, not necessarily with live services, because like Minecraft, you buy the game and then they update the game, and then over time, uh, well, Minecraft might be different, but you can go back to the old version of Minecraft. If you're like, Xbox 1.17, I'm gonna go back to beta. You can do that. Um, <laughs> other games you can't necessarily do that with. But the relationship in free-to-play games to 
developers and I'm trying to make a point. I keep going back to it and I keep forgetting it. But no. The relationship with the players is inherently exploitative in a way, because they have to keep coming up with ways for people to spend money. And unfortunately at this point, gambling seems like it's the best way for convenience spending. And it's really hard for them to think. It's certainly like from a, of a purely capitalistic like yes. perspective. It will it will make you Capital. the most money the fucking fastest. I will give it that. Yes. Like this yes. month this game it's is unethical as all hell. If not a fucking money maker, I will give it that. Also I am so fucked. Mm -hmm. All my all my DPS are is dead and I am now just all I have is my tank that also heals. So we're just gonna leave this domain. Yeah. We're just gonna leave. Um but un and unfortunately I think that's the, it's gonna be one of those issues of developers always looking for ways to exploit the consumers because if they don't exploit consumers then their game goes away then their company goes away so it's like free to play models always hinge on that exploitation unfortunately well and again i would i would articulate that there are free to play games that do not that are, i don't think run into the into the realm of exploitation how did the video but they mm -hmm. definitely don't have gambling mechanics. So, like, you know, like, like yeah. within the framework we're talking about, yes. I, th I do think, like, that loot boxes, these sorts of things are uh, fucking absolutely, you know, uh, like, it'd be, you'd be hard-pressed to develop one that is in no ways exploitative of anybody. Yes, um, a free-to-play, specifically free-to-play game. Now, the, if you bought, did, like, a paid game, you shouldn't have monetization in it anyway to be a paid game, but... We're not going to talk about Ubisoft. We're not going to talk We've seen bits of Leeway here. We've seen bits of Mondstadt. I should show you part of uh, Inazuma in our last 10 minutes of our stream so you can see the, yeah. the, what the so Japanese hard stuff says, like. how did the video game industry survive before internet content? They oh. sold games, and then they bought those games. <laughs> Mainly. And then the video game industry crashed because they were making too many bad games. And then it came back. And then they continued to sell games. Now, it is kind of like... It's such a, like, I don't know. I, I Like, I, I hear about <clears throat> in, like, mailing a free copy of the first chapter of Doom out to people. And it just seems so... Oh, that's so, the demo, yeah. Yeah, it just feels, I'm like, wow, that is, that's some retro shit, it feels like. Here's Inazuma, by the way. I really love this. They've done such a good job with this world. Is this the newest part? This is. This absolutely is. Okay. So I remember they, when it came out, everyone was like, oh, I need to go do the story in, in Azuma, or the people who yeah. played it. Here, let me show you. Actually, I'll go to one of the really cool areas. So they added a couple new uh, areas into the game that... Uh, <laughs> I'm just making and selling games. So this is, the, this is one of the newest areas they just uh, opened up in the game they've added in. Oh, my God. It's just so cool. They've done such a good... Like, that's the thing about Genshin, too. It's like, for all the I, shit I give MiHoYo about the way that they treat their fan base... Holy Christ, do they know how to do some art direction. One of the things Look at this. that pisses me off about Genshin, it's beautiful, it has a nice system, like a nice fighting system. From what I understand, the story's okay. Yeah, like it's anime bullshit, but it's fun anime it, bullshit. You know, it's in interesting anime bullshit. Yeah, let me There's switch out some characters. Too, you can put dogs things. in your house. Like, a yeah. lot of the things that I hear about Genshin Impact are good, but inherently the substructure of gacha just makes me not want to support it even like downloading it like i don't it's like i don't there's so much potential if they're just if it just wasn't a gotcha <laughs> if yep. it was just a let me release this game you pay 50 bucks like breath of the wild or something go play anime breath of the wild i'd be down Justice. for it but because it's a free-to-play gotcha i don't want to do it you know so here's Beto, by the way. She's another one of my favorites. She's a Claymore user, but unlike some of the other Claymore users. So two kinds of Claymore users in, in Genshin. There's like a... The music's fantastic, by the way. This, this oh, she out. holds that Claymore. Oh, my God. She <laughs> is... Her thing is that, like... Um, well, sir, there are Claymore users that are led around by how heavy their weapon are, and there are Claymore users that are not. So, like, Razor... Or I'll show you what I mean. There's, like... This is the level of detail they have put into the animations of this fucking game. It's fantastic. Like, so many good things We're to say about this game, but they treat their fan base like shit. So, here, when Grazer uses his Claymore, he is constantly tripping over himself. His last hit has a ton of end lag. You know? He's got some cool abilities, but, like, he's just clunky. Some people like him. I don't. 
the uh, fucking when we look at fucking um, Beto, for instance, Beto's claymore usage is way more elegant. She's not being led around by the weapon. She is leading the weapon around, which makes her feel more reactive. And I like that a lot more in a character in this game. So the other thing is you'll notice characters have different charge attacks. Like here, uh, Razor's charge attack animation is this swirl. A lot of claymores are. Beto's is this rushdown, and I like this a lot better. It's way more usable, you know? It just eats through your stamina yeah. and you're back to it. She has also, she's also the only character in the game with a counter. So you can do like insane damage by like targeting her counter and then releasing it, which makes her just really fun to play. But yeah, there's a lot of really yeah. great characters and they all have so very much, different attitudes. So much potential. Yep. But it's, it's extreme, cause you're right. In, in gacha games are built kind of designed around the gacha mechanic. This one kind of feels like, I think Miyoho does a decent job of saying, well, you can play the whole game without spending money, but we're also going to try to feed you into that spending money because that's what we want to do. Um, I'll, pull up, sure I'll just pull out some more characters so. as we're doing this, show off some more animations while we're talking. But yeah, it's... It I sucks. Know, it so, sucks a lot. It sucks. It, it sucks. sucks. It just like, sucks. I want to enjoy your <laughs> game, but I can't, Miyoho. Um, I have a few friends who play Genshin and play Honkai, but they made a pact to each other that they weren't going to spend any money on Miyoho because they hate Miyoho. <laughs> so they're like, I will play your game for free, Miyoho, and not give you any money. This character has an alternate sprint that lets her go into the ground, and she can actually dodge shit with this, by the way. It's too bad you don't have Ganyu. Ganyu is apparently my friend's favorite character. Ganyu is really good. I like Ganyu. Kazuha is absolutely my favorite. I love him. He's, like, probably an S-plus tier support. So like I could go into like the mechanics of like how you build teams in this game because there's a lot of really interesting stuff there. It's not like super complicated, but it's complicated enough that I would have to spend another hour talking about the game and doing Spiral Abyss. Generally speaking, Kazuo's role as a support is to cause elemental reactions and to gather, which means that when you know when he does his jump, enemies are suctioned into the center of the jump. So that is an invaluable thing to have when almost every big challenge in this game requires you to kill enemies within a certain amount of time. So you need, like, if you're going to try and kill any enemies with any amount of, like, time trial-related nonsense, you have to have a gatherer. There are only so many good gatherers in the game. There is a one that is pretty free. The Traveler has an okay gra gather on him, too. So, like, you could get by, you know? Here's some Polar Arm users while we're uh, chatting as well. Um, so I don't know if this is, applies at all to the thing. So I was talking about Destiny earlier. Destiny 2 just recently, like, deleted like four expansions pretty much yeah i'm not sure how i feel about that but i understand they, they have just, to make room it's it's like it's, it's like a future proofing thing but it's also like you just deleted years of content that people bought yeah because it wasn't free it, it wasn't like so like if if like they could have done it with like wow where WoW smooshed together look. expansions. For the God dang it, I'm talking about WoW again. But they smooshed together expansions where they, you know, they said, we're not deleting this them, interesting. but new players will choose one, one and do that. And they can yes, go back and do wish. the other ones, but they're going to be way over level. <laughs> like, they smooshed the level cap, too. That's that's the reason why they did it. So they didn't delete they it, but they kind of made them irrelevant, but they're still there. Destiny just deleted them. Yeah, I know. They're gone. And I was I like, what, why could you, you can't play? You can't go back and play them if you have them on Steam. They're just kind of sitting there in your inventory. Like I just, people spent sixty bucks on those expansions. Yeah. You know? It's kind of fucked up. It's like, hey, yeah. It's like it's one thing. Ah, it's so it's so. I'm just like that doesn't make any sense. They should have just made a new Destiny. And my friend who plays Destiny too is like, well, they didn't want to split the fan base. It's like, but they just deleted half the game. Yep. It made no sense to me. Yeah. Uh, also, just to say another thing about this game, although I, I absolutely agree, it's like, it's a tough thing to, to work with. Uh, another piece where you have this, these cool synergies between these characters that are really nice. Uh, Alloy and other characters will sometimes throw out a bomb that has little clusters in it. Kazuha, as a support, can pull those little clusters all into one place, and if enemies get pulled into them, they all hit. So again, you can like combo moves here. Because of the way elements react in the wild in this game, I can use Kaya to build a little bridge across the water if I want to. 
you know? Like, there's so much to love about the way that this stuff is set up and, like, the intricacies and, and thought that's put into their systems. But it, it always comes back to exactly what you said for me. It's like, yes, I enjoy this game, but on the other hand, you know, how much time should I responsibly be putting into this? How much money should I responsibly be putting into this? And, you know, like, can I advocate other people to actually play this game? And the answer I've come back to, the reason I haven't played this game on stream so fucking, for so fucking long, even though I've been playing it functionally since two weeks after launch, on and off, mind you, I haven't played straight, mm -hmm. is because I haven't been in a position where I felt comfortable demonstrating this to an audience, you know? But I, because, but I feel like at this point, when we're dealing with the, the specific conflict that we're having with the fan base, with MiHoYo, it, it behooves me, I think, as a player who's in this collab to, like, sit down at some point and really talk about, like, hey, by the way, there's fan labor being exploited. Hey, by the way, you know, this is the fan labor is is intimately wrapped up in, like, uh, Chinese labor laws or not Chinese labor laws, Chinese laws about, like, how these things are being produced, how in how the game industry works. And, and there's a lot of shit where, like, I would say I would go so far as to say the you know, American fan base doesn't really understand, you know, what the the environment is over there. I know sure as hell I don't. So, you know, there's this this kind of there's a lot. There's a complicated thing that's going on exterior to the game that's affecting the community of the game, and it, it, it's 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 shit all the way around. Anyway, long story short, this is this the whole conversation is how MiHoYo went from having a 4.8 rating on the App Store to a one point like five. <laughs> like they've just been absolutely like the fans are trying the best they can to to engage with them and, and say like hey you know uh do do something you know do something about this do something about this do something about this the chinese fans are bombing the mihoyo forums with images of the character named chi chi because they don't have any other way to protest like this is the way they can yeah. they can legally go about doing this protest so this character is just getting spammed everywhere you know Mm -hmm. That's what they got, and and so like on one hand, this is an extreme like the the hilariously the the effect that they've had by by engaging with the fans in the way that they have and engaging with their system the way they have is they've caused the fans to put a lot more labor <laughs> into their engagement with the game. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. It's one of those it's, things that I think David probably be, would be much more apt to, to talk about. You know, uh, I was going to say this is a good conversation, and I yeah. love it. I'm also rushing to complete some reading. <laughs> Are we over time? Well, we have it four. Well, we could talk about fan labor and exploiting fan labor on uh, a certain fan fan show. Fan show. Yeah, fan show. Um, but but uh, hopefully um, next week I won't have a presentation for this class, so I'll be more well prepared if we do Genshin next week. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to keep, if you guys want to keep having, playing this game, I can, I will make an alternate account and show you the intro of the game, go through some of the story chapters, because like the game talks about a lot of fucking complicated sociopolitical stuff and the jury is out on whether it does it well. <laughs> yeah, and, I feel like it. Uh... It's here and there. It's hit or miss. The characters can be great try, try and sometimes, <laughs> holy fuck. They just they just miss so hard. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? You know, you're like, mm -hmm. I can't even stand this. I don't know what I'm dealing with. Playing. It, mm -hmm. it is one of those games that like anybody who's who's engaged with it on like a critical level has to take a step back and go, OK, well, some parts of this game are straight up fucked, like in terms of the story, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. maybe maybe it's my responsibility to point that out every once in a while. Like <laughs> we're going to the main enemies that we're fighting are essentially just tribal civilizations. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah, which is, I realize, not like a weird thing in games, but they have their own language. Like, the game makes a point of pointing out that they have their own language, that they have their own cultural customs, and we're still just going around murdering the fuck, of, fuck out of them. So that's fun. Yeah. Um. But, like, talking about having things on stream that you're uncomfortable with, like, we mentioned WoW a few times. The... Uh, one of the... I think one of the main reasons why Final Fantasy XIV has been really popping off a lot is because a lot of really big WoW streamers are moving to Final Fantasy XIV either indefinitely or until everything blows over with Blizzard and actual meaningful change happens. Right. <laughs> so the, the inherent 
I don't want to promote this on my platform anymore. I'm really conflicted about what's going on at Blizzard. I'm going to do something else. And what is the other big MMO in the MMO oh, genre at the moment? Final Fantasy XIV. Yep. So they're like, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go do that. Um, I think it's responsible like of the people who played WoW. And they're just like, I'm not ignoring this. I'm going to go do something else for now. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, that's the responsible thing that they think they do with their content. And I know like... Genshin has a big like genre of people spending a lot of money to do polls. Am I incorrect with that? A lot of gotchas have that. Where yes, people just spend and there's a bunch there's a lot polls. of there's a lot of channels that thrive on demonstrating that mechanic and getting people invested in each of their polls. Yeah, yeah. that's irresponsible, my opinion. That's incredibly irresponsible. I think that's that's why I was like, I don't even want to go to the menu during the stream, and it became relevant in a way I could justify, mm -hmm. but like. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, I want to focus on the game. I don't want to focus, I mean, I want to focus on what the game is doing wrong, which gets us to the monetization system, but I don't want to, like, I, if we were, if, let's say if I was starting a Twitch channel to play Genshin, I would not want to stream any of my polls. I feel like that's, uh, that's, yeah. you know, even though it's a quick way to get views because the dopamine rush is real, mm -hmm. it's not a good way of treating your audience. <laughs> yeah, and it's also like, we go back, we've been talking, my, this whole discussion has been focused on kids. Uh, on adults, on adults. I haven't even touched on. Oh yeah, should God, kids there's a whole be fucking... into the monetization scheme. Yeah, which they shouldn't. <laughs> there's again my my uh, thing of developers need to be aware that kids can be using their platform and getting addicted to gambling via their platform. And B, parents need to be aware of what their kids are doing. Um, but we don't have to talk about that today. Yeah, we that's, we're already out of time. We're already like but, over time. So, <laughs> yeah. But maybe maybe this is a maybe this is where lunchstone is going. Like it feels like right now, me and you, Morgan, are just bouncing back and forth with shit we like in, to talk about in these things. So if that's where we go for the next two weeks until you uh, until you have to take a break. That's that's fine by me. Thank you guys for joining me on Genshin Quest. Um, here's a, like the last environment I'm showing you is just one more of the islands in Inazuma here. That just to show you how much the environment can really differ in this game. They've like again, so much to love, so much to hate. Um, this game is multiplayer, by the way. Uh, we can, like, if, if we want to revisit it, I can show you how the multiplayer mechanics work. I have to um, get up to like level sixteen or something like that, right? Yes, you would have to get up to level sixteen in order to in order to get to multiplayer. But I can ask the LFG people to come on and help with that, so we don't have to worry about you making an account and playing the game. But you know, if you there's something you else. end up doing, I'd be happy to play with you. Um, mm -hmm. Because I the know, uh, yeah. like, I have friends who play together. Stuff, so. Yeah, it's great. It's fun. <laughs> it's worth talking about because it changes the yeah. like instead of you having to manage four characters all at once, you have to man you get to manage one or two characters while your partner is also managing one or two. It changes the entire flow of the uh, of the uh, the game. So it's pretty cool that way. We're not um, gonna get there ourselves. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're not gonna. I could start maybe uh, one day if I get really upset with myself, I'll uh, I'll start a fucking Genshin every day stream on fucking serious play, but I doubt it. <laughs> Um, anyway. uh, if that happens, we know things have gone downhill. Yeah, we know that Ren that... has Ren has had a break from reality and is just doing his thing. <laughs> Ren has decided that this is the only thing that satisfies them anymore. Now, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, one day I will write a, a, a treaty on fucking Genshin Impact. I swear to God, this game just gets me thinking about all sorts of shit. But anyway, thank you guys there's for joining. There's a lot me. of oh yeah, there's a lot of socioeconomic money oh, monetization my. cultural bullshit that goes into this game. Oh, this my game God. could be like a whole book. Don't Genshin even fucking Impact. get me started on the god in the game that produces money and has gotten so used to money that he forgets to carry it everywhere. There's like, dude, there are just layers. Like, we could just talk for hours about individual things in this game because this game is trying to simulate a whole fucking, you know, world with sociopolitical intrigue across each nation while still maintaining a bunch of anime tropes. It's yeah. crazy. It's cracked. It doesn't make much sense, <laughs> but it is fucking insane. And there's like enough depth on it for me to just die. Um, it's a sad, a sad death. <laughs> Don't no, I don't want hard sell. No, you can't. You can't make me like. It's not. God, yes. Also, part yes. Part of my email appears on stream. I love that. <laughs> oh, All right, no. I'm, I'm doxed myself. Message. Oh God. Um, oh God. Anyway, uh, I am going to leave. go ahead and end the stream. But thank you guys for joining Bye, guys. me. Thank you, hard sell and chat, as well as mediocre and, and other people who popped in. So I think Sid popped yeah. in as well. So yeah. 
Catch you guys next lunch zone. Thank you.